A year ago, revolution was in the air in the Gulf Kingdom of Bahrain. What about now? After months of violence which killed dozens of protesters, the Bahraini king commissioned an independent inquiry and then he promised to implement sweeping reforms. My guest today is Nabil Rajab, one of Bahrain's most outspoken human rights activists. Has this strategically vital Gulf monarchy successfully reformed itself from within? Nabil Rajab, welcome to Hard Talk. Nice to be here. In other parts of the Arab world, we have seen autocratic regimes respond to popular protest with nothing but repression. Would you accept that it has been different in Bahrain? It's different that the only regime have invited other troops from other countries to take part in the crackdown. It's different that the only regime uh, have empowered uh, themselves with mercenaries brought fa from Pakistan, Syria, Jordan, and Yemen. It's maybe the only revolution that have received silence from the international community, from the Western government, from United States government due, due to their interests. It's the only revolution have not received a coverage in the media due to the complication, to the interest, to the oil, to the arms sale, to the interest of media station, TV station, and around the world. Well, those are differences that you sense, and we can talk about them, but the difference I was alluding to was actually a different one. It was the fact that what we have in Bahrain is a ruler, King Hamad, who, after months of popular protest and unrest and violence, actually said, I'm going to have an independent inquiry to see how my security forces have handled this. And when the independent report was issued, he accepted its findings and he promised major change. Yeah, but he didn't do it. He didn't keep his promises. It's the king uh, that doesn't normally keep his promises. Yes, he formed an independent commission according to him, which is not independent. Independent should be appointed by United Nations. The king himself... Well, hang on. The individuals in that commission of inquiry were independent. They were not from Bahrain. The leader of the inquiry was Sharif Basuni, who's an Egyptian-American, highly respected, worked on war crimes trials. These are individuals who worked inside Bahrain, finding out what had happened, and issued a report that was damning okay, of the Bahraini government. Let's not mix things. When someone accused of committing the crimes and violation himself form a commission, that commission is not called independent. King of Bahrain is responsible for the violation. He is behind the state of emergency. He is behind inviting the Saudi army to come to Bahrain. He is behind inviting the troops who are committing all the violation. And now he is forming the commission to find out who is the bad guy. Do you think the commission will say the king responsible to form this uh, commission is responsible? Do you think so? They will not even name a minister and they did not. You, you now the responsible guy according to the government are the small policemen small officer where those people who committed the crime they were ordered from the top from the ministers from the prime minister who are members of the ruling family but, but look look let, let, let's actually look at the wording of what came out in that independent report because you're suggesting it only pinned the blame on the bad guys it actually pointed to systemic problems inside your country for example security forces had used unnecessary and excessive force many de detainees were subject to torture including beatings electrocution threats of rape and religious insult these were all uh, put inside the report which the king accepted now that's extraordinary isn't it well for your information the number of people who were killed after the commission start their work is more than the people who were killed before the commission. That shows you there is nothing of implementation, as you mentioned. Those torturers are still in their job. Those people responsible of the violation of the killing were awarded a better job. The man responsible of the security apparatus, national security apparatus, who is responsible for most of the crime, he been awarded to be the king advisor 
and to head the, the, the council, the security council, which is all member of ruling family. So when you see criminals are being awarded, when you see people are still in their job and not investigation being made to bring those people to justice, so there is no implementation. It seems to me you have a choice to make. Here is the King of Bahrain who is promising to learn from what he now accepts are terrible abuses in the past. You have a choice. You can either take him at his word or you can just dismiss him as a liar who cannot and will not ever change, ever deliver real reform to your country. It seems you've taken the latter course. No, no. I'll take the chance where I will still listen and see where he's, he's taking well, us. You seem that. determined not to listen no, to I him. Mean, because I, I, mean, I, I can I, quote I, you from The Economist magazine. I think you'd accept a fairly independent-minded magazine. It said, after the king had reacted to this independent inquiry, it said, no other Arab leader has voluntarily invited such public scrutiny. Yeah, but it, it sounds good. It looks but it's, good. It's, but it's actually yeah, reality. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're being so cynical about the man. It seems to me you're suggesting that the only way forward for Bahrain, in your view, is for King Hamad and his entire family to go. Leave. No, I mean, well, if this is the choice of people, then he has to go. I'm not talking about he has to go and stay. But I want to put things on the context. Don't tell me, don't distance the king from responsibility. Forming a commission by the king himself at the time, where United Nations supposed to send the commission. That was made to stop the United Nations of sending commission. That commission is made because a lot of cases would have been activated in international criminal court and some courts in Europe against the king. This move by the king is to distance himself from responsibility. It's a smart move, but still we will work with it because we want to bring When you say it's a smart move, are you accepting that it's actually put you and other opponents of the regime on the back foot? Because no. what, what we have, hang on, let, let, let me just finish yeah. my thought. Go ahead. What we have here is a king who's promised to deliver fundamental reforms. For example, national security agency no longer given the right to arrest people. Civilian courts reviewing the cases of those detainees who were tried in military courts. Major reform of the police, including their training and their code of conduct. These are real reforms which we in the outside world can measure and the king has promised that he is now undertaking them. The, the difference between me and you, you are reading article and I'm judging from the practice. It's not article being made or statement being said by the king. The king known to be a person who doesn't keep his promises. The commission said that those people who are in jail now because of their uh, opinion, they should be released. And now it's months. More than, more than 2,000 have been. There were almost 3,000 people, but now you have something like 600. Leaders of opposition, human rights activists and defenders, unionists, uh, journalists, bloggers, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, the Commission said those people in jail because of their freedom of expression should be released. Just the other Tell day, this moment they are inside. Just the other day, the senior British former Metropolitan Police Chief John Yates, who's been hired by the Bahraini government, he said that excellent progress was being made on this whole raft of police and security force reforms. I think it's not uh, a long time before we go behind him and other international criminal court because he's taking part on the crime committed in Bahrain. He is taking part in covering the crimes and violations committed by the king. Every day we have daily basis people are dying. Yeah, because but of hang on, you're making very serious allegations here, but John Yates is a respected policeman who has gone there specifically to clean out the problems in the Bahraini police. That what is, is what he's been hired to do and he has a very strong reputation behind him to suggest his job that is he's to serious clean up about this uh, repetition of the king and his uh, regime. It's not to correct and to form the, the security institution. You go and see his five, six statement he made. Nothing other than covering the crimes committed by the king. And instead of committing, and instead of saying that what the United Nations has been saying is right, that we need to reform, what other human rights organizations been saying in the past month in regard to crimes, he is just covering the crime of the king, saying nothing's happening. Exactly, he become another Arab dictator talking from Bahrain. You keep talking about the crimes still being committed by the king's regime. What about your focus on some of the things that are happening from the other side of the political fence, about the clear evidence of violence being used by some of the village militias that we see in some of the Shia villages of Bahrain? We see Molotov cocktails routinely being used in protests. Have you made public condemnation of them? 
Well, we are against, uh, in principle, we are against violence, whether it's been used by government, used by a protester. I myself have several statements against Molotov cocktails, and I don't think that will solve any problem or a crisis. They are being used routinely, aren't they? They are being by used the now after a year of government killing people and a silence of international community, double standard of Western government. Now, after a year, people start using those when, Molotov cocktails. When, we uh, are against that. Yeah, when a, a, a cleric, Sheikh Issa Qasim, was recently captured on video saying that demonstrators should crush police if the, crush, uh, if the police rather attempted to abuse women at demonstrations, did you approve of language like crushing, crushing the police? Right of defense is a human right. So you think when Shia clerics in, in villages and mosques inside your own country are using this sort of language, it is not inflammatory, it is not dangerous, it is not fueling yeah, but the flames of violence? Well, well, you have to put things in the right position. When the, uh, when the security institution hire the mercenaries from outside to raid your villages. Hang on, what do you mean by moment, mercenaries? I, mercenaries, they are not local people. They are brought from outside. They are not from the country. They are brought to take part in the crackdown. They have special houses. They are living in special cities, isolated from people, tribes from Pakistan, from Jordan, from Syria, from Yemen. They don't mix with people, giving extra money than what normal policemen get. If those people raid your houses, steal your things, attack your daughter, harass them sexually, torture them systematically, arbitrarily arrest them, and now to defend yourself, you are arguing that? Right of self-defense is a human right. You, again, seem to be ignoring serious efforts apparently being made by the government to change the way the security forces operate. I'll just point to one more specific, which, again, you've made no account of. That is that the, the police, who are supposed to police the riots, are now told that they can only conduct interrogations in rooms which have closed-circuit television, a direct response to allegations that in the past they've used interrogations under torture. Before doing that, they have made the new buildings uh, torturing center. They made the municipality, they made the horse stable, and they made the youth hostel as a uh, torturing center. Now they're putting cameras, but the torture has been committed in those buildings. There are special buildings being made. Camera is not there. Those buildings didn't belong to police. They did not belong to security institution. It is for different uh, civil institution, and they're been committing torture there. So this is, they are not solving the problem. They should interrogate people in one place, cameras should be there, and not arresting somebody and taking them to those places and torturing them. Then after that you take him in a room for a picture? Yeah, you, I think it is fair to say, are probably one of the most outspoken, if not the most outspoken, human rights activist in Bahrain today. The fact is you are free to travel to a country like the United Kingdom, to come on a show like Hard Talk and make the most explosive set of allegations about what is happening right now inside your country. Does the, not that in itself point to a government which is not using the same repressive tactics as those we see in Damascus, that we saw before in Libya, and maybe even in Tunisia as well? Well, our colleagues, the human rights defender, they were uh, systematically tortured. Some of them were killed. Some of them are in exile. Maybe I'm the only one. And, and, and if you, I mean, somebody listened to you, they think that I'm, nothing is happening to me. No, I've been attacked. I've been tortured. I've been kidnapped. My business were fired. My staff were uh, attacked. Well, my yeah, house well, were well, attacked. Well, when you say torture, I mean, torture is a, a very big word, of course. I was uh, kidnapped uh, last year in March from my house by 25 masked uh, civilian armed to unknown place after blindfolding me, handcuffing me, taking me to unknown place, torturing me, then bringing me back, throwing me back out of my what, house. What, what form of torture? Anything that you imagine from sexual harassment to beatings to while I'm lying in the car to kicking to pulling here and there, punching, uh, all I mean. See, John, John Yates, whom you've <laughs> already suggested you have no faith in, but John Yates, a former senior officer in the Metropolitan Police, says that if there are allegations like the ones you've just made to me, he believes the only thing to do is to go to the authorities, 
to explain what has happened, and he says that he is convinced reforms inside the security forces mean that those allegations will be treated seriously from now on. I've tried the, what he said, and I've taken a few witnesses of crime committed by the police, and those witnesses are in jail today. Behind bar, tortured also. What I hear from you is a complete disbelief in the current government's commitment to reform. But are you not in danger of missing an opportunity? Because there is no question that the ruling family in Bahrain is divided. King Hamad, it seems, is torn between a reform-minded crown prince who is encouraging him to be more progressive, to open up, to become more of a constitutional monarchy, and on the other hand, as you've already described, a prime minister, his uncle, who for years and years has been a hardline repressive leader. If you chose to go down the path of dialogue, you could expose those divisions. I am with a dialogue. I'm supporting a dialogue. And I think dialogue is the only solution for the crisis. I don't think inviting Saudi army will solve the problem. I don't think depending on foreign power is, and I don't think making an internal issue regional is going to solve the problem. I believe in dialogue and I am well, why won't you talk then to the government? Because there's, you have said in, in the recent past that until you there say is no all offer. political prisoners are released, you're not going to talk at all no, to no, the government. Well, first of all, there is no such offer that you are mentioning. Well, of course there's such an offer. Indeed, uh, another human rights activist in your country who runs a rival organization has already said that he will talk to the government. He's participated in, in the commission which is overseeing the reform implementation. And he says it is better to get 40% of what you want from within the tent than 0% outside the well, tent. Well, it's, it's a nice statement. Where is the 40%? Where is the 40%? Well, I've, where just is talk, it? I've just talked where about is it the raft of but reforms you brought... which King Hamad has now committed to. Where is it? Well, the point is, obviously you're going to judge him over there time. There is no dialogue. you're not even prepared to push for the, the reforms the, the government that he says don't he's want to, to make. No, the, the government don't want to sit with the opposition on a dialogue. Until, until this moment... Well, this is there chicken is... and egg, isn't it? Because what, Wafak, the, 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 the main Shia opposition party they inside they the lower house, yeah. they said they won't talk. I mean, No, they didn't say that. I'm, I'm well, very they, sorry, they're dear not, friend. They're not, in, they're not engaged in the negotiations. Nobody asked them. Nobody invited them to for a dialogue. There is no such dialogue. There is a statement, misleading statement to this news agency and to that TV, TV channel. In reality, there is no dialogue. Government don't accept a dialogue. Government has a, they have own condition, and they have, there is no dialogue. I will fuck an old political society. They will come, they yes. will come the, 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 the dialogue. The danger, of course, we haven't really talked about it much, except I did ask you about what the demonstrators are doing in some of the villages around Manama. But I think we have to talk about the degree to which this is a sectarian protest movement. There are indications, particularly coming from the radical statements from some of the, the sheikhs in the mosques, that. A Shia sectarianism is driving the opposition to the regime. Why did you categorize it as sectarian? Is it because majority of the protesters are Shia? And also because, you because some of the most radical sentiment is being expressed, be. expressed from the no, no. Shia mosques. They have very clear demand. There are clear demand. If those demand look to be sectarian, then you can say. If those well, do, you demand, do you think they're sectarian? Of course not. Elected government is a sectarian. When you ask parliament that has power, it's, you call that sectarian. If you ask government to respect the human right and to have their laws and institution according to international standards for human rights, is that sectarian? No, but Those what, are the what, demands. What sectarian is when you see vigilantes patrolling villages, setting up roadblocks, and when you look at who these people are, they are 100% Shia. Yeah, but those are not, this is not sectarian. It is violence, yes. But it's not sectarian. Those people are blocking roads because they are not allowed by government to protest peacefully. If they are allowed to protest peacefully, they wouldn't go and block roads. Let me ask you, and you already talked about it briefly, about the international uh, reaction to what has happened in Bahrain over the last 15 months. The United States, the United Kingdom, other Western governments, although they've expressed concern about the violence, at no time have they ever indicated that they're close to regarding the Bahraini government as illegitimate or acting in a way that means they can no longer be allied with them. Well, the hypocrisy of the Western government were very much exposed here in Bahrain uh, issue. And uh, the double standard of their foreign politics has damaged their reputation and image. And I don't think what the British 
and what the American doing will help their uh, uh, strategic interest. But do you, do you accept I, I, there is I, not one chance, not a chance, that the United States, for example, is ever going to cut its ties with the Khalifa dynasty? It because does the fifth, look, the fifth, no, it does not look like they're going to do that. No. no. So in that sense, if I can describe you not just as a human rights activist, but as a member of the opposition, uh, you really do not have any prospect of any diplomatic support from powers that matter. Well, when we started our revolution, we did not count on the British and American support. And we don't want it. And we don't need it. What we ask, we ask for a political support. We said Americans and UK and British should have the same package towards all revolution, whether it's in Syria or it's in Egypt or in Libya or it is in Bahrain. Having two languages... To having two different policies to a different revolution, that will not serve them. We count on our own people. Do you understand? We count on our own beliefs. Yeah. And we will win because of that, not because of anybody's support. You keep using the word revolution. Do you understand that when that word is heard in Washington, given the fact that they base their fifth fleet in Bahrain, given the fact that Saudi Arabia is next door, Iran is only just over the water, the last thing they want to see in such a vital strategic place is revolution. Then why you talk about democracy? Then why you talk about human rights? This is hypocrisy. Revolution, when it happened in Syria and it happened in Libya, you support it because you had bad relations with those guys. But when it comes to Bahrain, the last thing you want to see a revolution, the last thing you want to see that people fighting for democracy, the last thing you want to see by people fighting for justice, what you're talking about? Don't talk about values. Don't talk about principles. Don't talk about justice in somewhere and somewhere else ig ignoring it. But I come back to the point about practical politics. If this is the reality in which you live, that is the nature of Hypocrisy. Bahrain's strategic yeah. position. Yeah. Oh, you, absolutely. as an opposition uh, member, as a guy who cares so much about human rights, surely the most pragmatic, useful thing you can do is find avenues to get to common ground with this regime so we, that you can, you can achieve as much as well, is possible. Well, we're trying our best, but it's not a condition that either we have good relation with... We have to, we will, we will not be able to ask the British to listen to us or ask the Americans because we don't have oil to give. We don't have arm to buy. We don't have arm market to buy. We don't have a, a sixth fleet to, to allow them to be here or not to be here. Government have more to offer. Those suppressive dictators have more to offer to those democracy, democracies around the world. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen that in the recent past, in the last year, since the violence began in Bahrain, the US and UK have continued to supply some arms to the Bahraini government. I just wonder... And asking the Russian to stop selling arms to Syria. This is what is called hypocrisy. So what, what do you want from the West? We want them to respect the words they say and they commit themselves with. They to respect the International Convention for Human Rights, to respect the international standard, to have one policy towards each and every revolution, to have each and every one policy towards all dictators, not only those dictators you have a problem with, but even those dictators whom you have a good relation with. A final thought, um, Bahrain is to host a huge international sports event, the Formula One racing, motor racing, in April. Is your message that they should not do that? And if it's they a shame do, of them doing that. Do you want it stopped? It should stop. At least out of respect for the Formula One staff who were systematically tortured. If it's not stopped and Bernie Ecclestone, the boss of Formula One, has Help. given no indication it will be, what will happen in Bahrain? Nothing will happen except we will say that's wrong and the, the, you are helping dictators. And we're going to protest. We're going to use opportunities that a lot of journalists are there. And we're going to protest everywhere. You'll try, and, you'll try and disrupt it as much as you can. And we're, gonna, we're not going we to... We we're not going to spoil their event, but we're going to get uh, uh, benefit out of it. Journalists are there, a lot of people from outside coming in. We're going to start protesting even inside the Formula One. A final thought. You talk about revolution. Will the monarchy in Bahrain be there in 10 years time if they don't reform themselves monarchy in bahrain saudi arabia the whole gcc the whole monarchy in the arab region if you don't reform yourself meet the demand of the people you will go away nabil rajab we end there thanks for being on hard talk thank you thank you